sometimes I get talking to somebody and I ask why I do what I do. There's a lot behind it. When I joined school back in the 80s, I was very able. I got things very, very quickly. Um, I, I, I seem to recall enjoying school um, for the first few years and it, and it went pretty well. There came a time where I got bored. Things just were too slow and I kind of already got things that we were doing and I wanted to move on. So you make your own entertainment. I got distracted. Um, I'd chat to my friends. Um, I'd find my own way of uh, doing things. And obviously that got me sent to uh, the head teacher from time to time. Um, I used to tell jokes to my friends and be witty and come up with um things to make other people laugh because i enjoyed making other people laugh um for the most part my primary school years you know i was in a lot of trouble uh my parents were always called in because i was talking or distracted and, and stuff like that um but my primary school life wasn't too hard uh wasn't too bad i don't remember it as being a terrible time uh, i do remember um a teacher hitting me with a with a with a big old book about you know probably wasn't that thick but they hit me around the head with a book and um, broke my glasses. Um, so I do remember that. Uh, but I don't remember it being terrible. Age 11, I went to a secondary school, um, just a normal comprehensive. At the time, they had a, a 13 plus system for grammar school. Uh, my time at that secondary school was was pretty awful, um, being honest with you. Um, I was told all sorts of negative things about me um i was told that i was going to be a failure i was told that i would end up in prison um when i left school i spent an awful lot of time out of lessons uh, because they didn't want me in the lessons um i had my nose broken by a teacher um or i think it was broken at least badly damaged lost loads of blood um he passed me a ball uh because for some reason what actually happened was I was talking to somebody at the time and um, I think he was calling me. I think it was like, John, John, John. And he was probably getting really annoyed. I can understand that. It must be really frustrating working with kids who don't listen to you. Eventually he got so annoyed that he just pitched a cricket ball straight at my face. First thing I know was like just blood sprayed out my nose. I felt the pain, blood sprayed out my nose and was just pouring um, blood out of my nose. Um... I remember getting cornered by two teachers uh, at that school. I was only there for two years, so it was quite an eventful two years. I remember getting cornered by two teachers at that school um, and then absolutely tearing me to pieces. Um, uh, the The whole school was empty. Uh, the block where I was was empty. Everyone had gone out to play, I think, or lunch or whatever. Um, and it was just these two teachers, the head and the music teacher, and they just tore into me. Um, I can't remember whether there was violence involved. I can't remember whether they had me around the neck or not. I just don't remember. Um, but I do remember it being a very intimidating um, situation. Um, very, very threatening. Um, and just totally inappropriate way to deal with an 11-year-old child, as I was at the time. Um, I remember being very, very sad at that school. I remember not knowing what to do because i wanted to get on and i wanted to do stuff and i and i and i was bright but um i just couldn't seem to navigate the school without finding myself in trouble with somebody um so that was that uh, what else happened there um yeah i had a teacher say oh you're going to end up in prison um very very negative narrative from quite a few of the teachers there i had one who made me sit out on a stool when it was raining really hard um because he didn't want me in the lesson and he thought it'd be a good way to humiliate me um it was a really terrible time and it was an awful school in retrospect the culture was one of um well bullying from 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 the teachers actually um now I, now i think about it i didn't really realize it at the time at the time i just thought this is the way life is you know if you're naughty if you're bad if you're a problem then you deserve this treatment um so that was that was not a good time in my life um age 12 i did the 13 plus um i think it was age 11 actually i did it a year early i passed i got in 
and the grammar school were going to let me go uh, there but then they reversed the decision last minute um i uh had to do another year at the school that i was at uh, which was just shocking i mean i was suspended for i don't know what i was suspended for um i think maybe i kicked a chair i think i kicked a chair because the music teacher i think it was uh, maybe it was my form tutor somebody who who I, who I think had it in for me um excuse me just taking my jumper off it's really hot in here um <laughs> someone who had it in for me um was was just being disproportionately unreasonable and um i think they, they they made me go and stand outside the lesson and like i'm not claiming i was an angel i'm not claiming that i never did anything wrong i'm not claiming that um I wasn't irritating or that I didn't talk or that I didn't but I never set light to anything I wasn't a fighter I didn't break things I didn't smash windows um, I didn't swear at teachers I might have been a bit quick um, sometimes uh, you know might be maybe a little bit argumentative or, or, or um, uh, cheeky I suppose um, but I'm not sure it warranted the level of aggression verbal and otherwise that that, that was uh, metered out so then I went to the grammar school the grammar school was quite different. Um, it went okay at first. It was a bit more challenging and a bit more interesting for a bit. Some of the lessons were insanely boring with historic, like, you know, teachers that were essentially fossils. Um, you know, they were so old. Um, I, I, you know, I remember my geography teacher being incredibly dull, um, probably very bright, probably really nice guy, but just incredibly dull. His lessons were so boring um history the same maths i was a bit more interested in so that was kind of better because it was like i liked solving the problems and learning the concepts um but anyway pretty soon i i was in trouble um with uh, uh various lessons um i didn't get into the head that much of that school but um i do remember being in trouble for various things um i remember my dad getting called into pe because one of the teachers didn't think i was participating in pe um sufficiently and um my dad was pretty like appalled as a self-employed guy that they'd dragged him in to talk about pe um he wasn't really that sort of supportive of that as a as, as a complaint i don't think um so it came down to gcse's um i don't remember any real violence from there i mean i had a teacher who used to call me child from hell um and i remember some of the teachers saying things that were a bit like controversial but there was not that nasty malice that there was at the school prior um uh there was very much a message of you know you go to university or you fail there wasn't really much acceptance that you could do anything else uh you either went to university and became a, a professional or you just gave up and you failed um in year i guess year 10 um my dad died just out of the blue um he killed over one day um we took him to hospital i called an ambulance we went to hospital um and he died the same day um it's pretty devastating my, my my dad was a really um i don't know like i had a good relationship with him and it was a pretty devastating uh, occurrence for me um at the time uh when i it was in the, it was in the april holidays just after his birthday when i got back to school you know i would have thought right they know my dad's died my mum's told the school that'll be cool you know they'll tell my peers so when i go back into school it'll be a nice easy ride and hopefully i'll get a few people you know pat me on the back or put a heart arm around me or something you know some kind of uh moral support for you know because i was in quite a bad way i went back into school and on the first day that i was back one of my friends came up to me he said where have you been and i said oh um just trying to keep it together my, my my dad died in the in, in the in the holidays um so I, I i was at his funeral uh yesterday and my friend uh turned to me and said well he was knocking on a bit wasn't he because the teacher hadn't bothered to tell them that my dad had died they didn't see it as important to give that sort of care or regard to me the guy was a pretty strange individual not my dad the, the the teacher although my dad was quite strange um but but he 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 didn't really have much in the way of empathy i don't think he liked me very much um 
he was a pretty cold fish um, and he maybe he saw it as a way of getting back at me for being slightly difficult um, to, to subject me to the pain of having those conversations. I mean, my dad was quite old. Uh, it's true to say um, I, he was in his 50s when I was born. But, you know, he was great. And um, I, I, I learned a lot from him. And he certainly sort of set me on an entrepreneurial path. I used to spend time running around with him from age, um, I don't know, from a young age to antique fairs, buying and selling stuff. Um, I would see stuff to buy and sell. Um, he was great. He was a great guy. Um, and he was a very good person. He used to do a lot of good in the community. So he used to, he was quite churchy. I'm not. Um, uh, and he would, when he'd finished church, he would go and see people, elderly people. He would, uh, I'd go with him and we'd sit there and have a cup of tea with them. He would and talk to them about, you know, life, what they've been up to, maybe take something along to show them like an antique or something just to kind of, you know, give them a lift during that day to make sure they'd seen someone. That was the sort of person he was. He would come into the school and work with the kids who couldn't read so well and he'd sit and read with them. He was just a good egg. You know, again, I'm not saying he was perfect. He definitely wasn't, but he was a good egg. Anyway, back to school. Um, so GCSE years, um, I think it was uh, my dad died in the first or the second year of GCSE. I can't really remember. Um, I'd have to work out. I was 15, so some of you will know. Um, I think it was the first year. And then I was banned from English uh, because I was, I don't know, calling out or, uh, you know, just generally irritating. Um, and I think I was banned from another couple of lessons as well. But still, I got through my GCSEs. I got 10 GCSEs. I was fortunate that they were quite easy when I did them. And I kind of had the right mind for it. It was kind of my way of working. Um, and then we went to A-levels. Uh, pretty soon into um, the, uh, my A-levels, the teacher said to me, look, John, you're, you're, you don't really seem very engaged with this. Which, I mean, wasn't massively surprising. My dad had died a year earlier. School was terribly boring anyway. Um, and really, it was only the social side that I enjoyed. Um, so they said to me, well, you know, we've kind of got two choices now. Either you can decide to leave or we could ask you to leave. Um, so I decided to leave on that basis. And I went off and I worked for a bit. Um, I worked for a local double glazing firm for a bit, driving around with a um, uh, a young lad who had an XR3i smoked like a chimney whilst we were going places we 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 it, he would drive like you know 100 miles an hour everywhere and then one day um had a problem with his car we pulled over and the tires were completely bald like completely slick all the way through to the cords and i was thinking wow you know this is a guy that i'm driving around with uh, you know him driving around 100 miles an hour with me um, as a passenger. So um, I like to think that maybe my dad was watching out for me in some kind of, you know, spiritual way, um, you know, like guardian angel or something, because I had quite a few occasions like that. Anyway, the next year, I really felt, oh, society wants me to go back and do A-levels. Now, if I had my time again, or if I um, was giving myself advice, I'd say, don't bother. I'd say, go and find an entrepreneur, go and find somebody who's doing something interesting, go and find somebody who who can mentor and and make the most of all your natural skills and natural abilities and teach you a bit about life and business. Um, and that's definitely what I would have done. I went back and I did two more years of A-level. Uh, during that time, my mum uh, decided she, she needed to move away because of, you know, the difficulty of my dad passing. Um, she was going to Suffolk. And there was no way that I was going to go and live in rural Suffolk. So I moved out on my own and um, sort of just <sighs> coasted my way through the last two years of A-levels. Um, you know, having I, I lived on my own, uh, drank a lot, uh, went out a lot, prioritised petrol in my car and drink over food, didn't eat, got ill. I was in a bit of a terrible state, really. <laughs> <laughs> so it was hardly surprising that when my A-level results came in, um, I didn't really have any. Um, I think I got two N's and an E, um, which, you know, the E's pretty good for someone who, who was barely uh, engaged with school whatsoever. Um, so, I mean, that was a bit of a long life story. I just wanted to share with some of you why I do what I do now. I just don't want other people 
going through school feeling that they're naughty that they're bad that they're a failure if they don't do the highly prescribed route that school wants them to do everyone has something about them everyone has an ability some innate skills some something that they're really good at now that could be you're just really strong and you know you you, you love lugging stuff and you want to go and lug stuff for a living it could be that it could be that you're not really strong but you're great with people it could be that you're really terrible at writing and you and you can't do maths for, at all but you're incredibly empathetic and you care about people and you want to help people there's jobs for all of these people there's opportunities for all of these people school will tell you that that well some schools sorry some schools will tell you that you have to go and do x or y to succeed it's not true you don't you have something about you no matter what anyone else has told you before whether you've never had anyone tell you that you're good that you're worthy that you're worthwhile you do you are you have whatever order that should be in so the reason why i do what i do is because i don't want people to feel the way that i felt growing up i don't want people to feel like they're a failure like they're a disappointment like they don't matter unless they follow a specific route if you can empathize with this on any level for you your children um if you are a business owner if you are uh, an employee i would love to work with your business to help give young people a bit of a different perspective on life if you're a parent i would and your kids are struggling i'd love to work with you to help the school see it differently because we think because they're in education and because they're in this kind of official capacity that they understand things better than us as parents or as children but they have their view of the world it doesn't mean it's the only view some of them have never left education i'm not knocking teachers they do an amazing job they do a really really good and hard job most of them but they are not the ultimate truth for everything there are so many different opportunities and different things out there. Look, I know this was a bit weird. It was a bit of a rant. Um, I was writing some LinkedIn posts and I felt mildly emotional. And I thought I should really put out there why I do what I do. Um, if anyone's watched it all the way to the end, thank you very much. You're a very patient person. And, uh, you know, you should make sure that uh, that patience is rewarded in your work. Um, if you only caught a few minutes and have skipped through, thank you anyway. Um, if you like, uh, if you want to like or subscribe um, uh, to the channel, uh, like the video or subscribe to the channel, please do. And um, I'll come back with something a little bit more upbeat and cheery and a bit less morbid soon. So thanks very much for checking in. Take care.